So recently I had read the book The Elite by Kira Cass. It's the second installment to the Selection series. It's a really good series. I highly recommend it. The books are short so, and you should read them because they are really good. I suggest not watching this video if you don't want to be spoiled. If you do, you can stay. One thing I really like about this series is that it's just like those feel good kind of book. In this book, America is still trying to decide whether between Maxine or Aspen and even though in the end of the selection she decides she's going to go for Maxine but that didn't really last 30 pages into the book. But she's kind of debating whether fact where Maxine she could get a lot of things like Maxine could give her the world or Aspen or give her anything because he's a six. This series has the most annoying love triangle I've ever read. But first of all, it's not even a triangle, it's more like a V because in other books, for example, The Infernal Devices, it was a triangle because Jem knew Will, Will knew Jem, and they all knew Tessa. Where this Max and Aspen don't even really know each other, their positions, but America knows both of them, so it's more like a V. Whereas this is the most annoyingest one ever because I find myself in love triangles I'm usually not able to decide what guy I like better. Well here, I know which one I like better. I like Maxim better. Because Aspen, if America just realized who Maxim really is, one thing I find the most annoyingest thing of America's character is that she just keeps asking for more time. More time. Or oh, I need more time. Well America, time only lasts for so long and eventually you're gonna ruin out. So then when she starts getting offended, when Maxim starts seeing other people, it's like America, because every time he's letting talk to you, you're all like, I need more time. I need more time. I don't want to say I like you because I need more time because you're right now actually in your own selection because you like Aspen. It's so offended when she sees Maxine with another girl and stuff. It's like, America, aren't you doing the same thing? The only difference is his is illegal. He's supposed to be doing that. Where you're, yours is totally illegal. So you can't really blame him being his own selection. I care. He was right to propose to you on Halloween party, and you just said no because you didn't know if you could be a princess. And then America goes to Aspen and asks, hey, can I become a princess? And then Aspen, being brutally honest, tells her no. Well, America's also hurt by this. And America, what did you expect he was going to say? Yes. He said yes, and he's knowing you're going to go to Maxon, and you two will get married, and he likes you. Why would he do that? I can't help but feel that throughout the book, America plays this poor me act because she's a five and it's the cast system and that she just needs more time. And I feel like because she feels like she's a lower number, she has the power to kind of control Max in a way. And I know this is a really crazy idea, but just throughout the book, she kind of just plays this feel sorry for me kind of role. Marley, America's best friend, ends up getting in trouble in the book because while she's in the selection, Marley ends up falling in love for a guard. And I uh, find out. And so since this is treason and she's in the selection, she is publicly caned in front of the whole nation. Well, America, this being her best friend, can't take this. So she tries to stop it and everything. Well, now America's ticked with Maxon because he should have done something to stop it. Maxon's trying to explain to America that he would if he could, but he couldn't. He had to do it, and that was a better punishment than death, what they should have received. And later on in the book, Maxon shows America that he hired Marley and her husband to work at the palace. So now America's happy, and she forgives Maxon, and Celeste has to make a comment, a rude comment. Well, America then slaps her. And part of me is thinking, good for you, America, because honestly, there's been many times where I would want to slap her, too, because she is just a mean person. But the thing that was kind of a little irritating is that America slaps less. She did more than slap. She mostly attacked her and she gets away with it. Where in the first book, Anna gets sent home because she slapped her less. So why is America different? Because Maxon likes America, he gives her a second chance. The king. The king does not like America. He hates America. And when America was going to be sent home at the end of the book, but Maxon saved her, the king was not happy about this. And then the king runs into America in the hallway of the palace. And he tells her he does not like her and that she is not as pretty as all the other girls because she has red hair. What does he have against redheads? Redheads, yes. They may say they don't have souls, but we're very delightful people. Oh, we're on the subject of the king. The king 
whips Max in. Apparently now, child abuse is illegal in Ilya. That or the dude can't follow his own laws. So America finds us out through a rebel attack and she is forced into a secret hiding place with Maxin. She sees Maxin's hurt and that's how she finds out. Well, she promises Maxin she won't tell anyone, but we'll see how far that goes because we all see what happened with the books. There is a secret library in the middle of the palace and it has every history book known to mankind about mostly anything you could want. Books all over the place. Jackson asked America if he could not tell anyone. Well, America goes tells her father. And part of me's thinking, is her father on these rebel attacks? Because in the later attack, America runs into the woods and she sees a girl who is carrying a big sack of books. And it's funny because books were never involved until now. That her father loves history and he dislikes the caste systems. And I find it funny because um, America's name is America, which was previous before Ilya. So maybe her father named her that to deal with the, how he liked the way America was run before Ilya took over. Another thought is, is the fact that they are history books and they have all the information of Ilya on it. And so they could easily use that against the palace against the king gets a whole society to succeed through their plan. It's like how America used it for her project. So back to America's project. So all the girls in the selection had to come up with an idea how it would benefit the cast and the society. So everyone had to choose a topic they would do to help others. Well America's not sure what to do which I'm thinking well maybe music because you know you're involved in music, like maybe she could do it for those who just want to do music but can't do it because of their cast. But instead, America decides she's going to eliminate the cast system. Now, isn't that a government job? Like seriously, I don't think America really realizes that she does not have that power. And she's not really gaining favor in anyone besides the people in the cast and who dislike the cast. But in the end, that's not going to help her win because they don't have a decision whether or not she wins. Only Maxon does. And the king and the queen influence Maxon on his decision. So if they don't like America, America is not going to win. I give a lot of respect for Chris in this book. Because Chris also realized that her and Max are becoming really close. And they started to be close since the whole thing with Marley and stuff. Well now America's starting to get a little jealous at Chris because of Max and likes her. And he feels like Max is pulling away from her. So Chris kind of wants to talk to America about this. Like, so there's no hurt feelings, there's no negative tension between them because Chris still wants to be friends. And as much as I respect Chris for this, in a way it's like she's breaking all the best friend codes where if your friend likes this guy, you gotta back off. But the only problem is this is a selection and you're all going for the same guy. And in the end, only one of you will get him. And then Chris says, are you sure he still likes you? Translation. I want you to go home, so if you feel like he doesn't like you anymore, you should go home too. I want to win, and I know he's going to choose you if you don't choose me. And then there's this one scene between Max and Celeste, and America just happens to walk in. America, being America, is greatly offended by this, and doesn't want anything to do with Max, and she shoves Max in and just is so angry with him, but it's like, America... When do you have to start realizing that this is a selection? It's not just about you. Even though he does prefer you, but you keep pushing him away. So what do you expect? What I found interesting here was the fact that um, in the book, purple is considered bad luck. Where in our society nowadays, it's considered royalty. In this book, I really wanted to end in a proposal and we could get on with it. The next book could be about America becoming a princess. But instead, the selection will be dragged on through another book. I feel like I'm not going to be satisfied if it just ends of her becoming a princess by Max and proposing to her. Because I really want to know, what is their life going to be after this? I don't want just an epilogue kind of thing. Not enough. I would like a book, like a whole book, uh, just about how America's life has changed. Hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed it. And if you haven't read it yet, you should still go read it. Thank you for watching. Bye.